So there is another thing that uh, I came across um, with recently. It's like statistics on haptics, um, which says that, I mean, some market researchers, they project that haptic industry will grow to 23 billion within the next few years. So I wanted to ask you, what do you think about this projection? And like, what are the main challenges and opportunities you see for the haptic industry? Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I'm... I, I think that that shows the the momentum that the haptics uh, world is gaining and the the increase uh, increased um, interest in the world of haptics. If you think about it, haptics are already widespread and used by a variety of industries. We can think about wearables, game controllers, phones, sex toys, simulations, automotive, VR. Um, in VR, there are uh, Hapex, uh, Sense Globe, Tesla suits, to give just some examples. So, so I think it's. And it's nice that those examples, because at the beginning, VR was all about graphical realism to make it uh, nicer, uh, you know, visually. But now we understood that touching is believing. So I remember when I was playing with the DK1 of Oculus many years ago, they had this demo of the castle of cards and I was just trying to, to hit them, to make them collapse. But first, I didn't have any body or hand tracking. So when I was looking down at my body, there was nothing. Uh, and then even if you have it, uh, if if there is no interaction between you know, your intent to, to, to make an action on the environment and the answer from the environment, then you lose this, this uh, sense of, uh, of presence. So I think That's it's true. nice that now we are shifting towards uh, integrating the, the haptics. One of the challenges I would say is that, as I said before, haptics is very a very complex um, sense. So in that regards, I don't know any technology that now can stimulate effectively all of the subcategory of touch. So maybe the future will be um, something where, you know, uh, we use more than one device uh, devices at the at the same time to to provide something that comes up uh, alive. Um, yeah, so, and, and as you said before, also the lack of uh, haptic vocabulary that might uh, limit a bit the way we, we expand our research because we don't have uh, common words between different platforms or haptic devices, who is using force, who is using vibrations, and even in effective touch, you might say pleasant and unpleasant, but it doesn't really mean much. Now, what is pleasant for you might be unpleasant for me and vice versa. Okay. Uh, so, I mean, but if you think about it, it's it's the potential is so rich, right? Like oh, yes. even looking at those planes of uh, being something pleasant or unpleasant, right? It's a mm -hmm. spectrum, and this spectrum consists yeah. of so many different nuances in between, right? Mm -hmm. um, and you mentioned, I, I like that phrase you said, "touching is believing," and mm -hmm. then you started talking about VR, which yes, VR is like the most uh, I would say like known use case for mm. haptics like it's a more complex use case for yes. haptics beyond like simple notifications on the mm -hmm. phones which all of us have but but is there something more kind of out of outside of entertainment area mm. right is there something more serious <laughs> or like um you know romantic in a way like save the world type of thing <laughs> <laughs> uh place for haptics in this world like, what is your dream vision for haptic? Mm. Haptics? Yeah, your, your personal. Yeah, yeah. One, one more fake and uh, sci-fi that is links to when I saw the TMS machine at the university. This transcranial magnetic stimulation, basically, is a coil. Um, it's um, uh, electromagnetical coil. You pass it around the scalp, and then you can deactivate or well change the brain activity so that uh, people will move the hands, for example, or the feet. So mm. I was thinking maybe to bypass all these black box of nerves and how the signal is integrated, and then just stimulate the brain so that you put a helmet, and then you have this kind of uh, sensation just delivered into the brain. I don't know if this is something that we want or something that uh, is feasible, honestly, but on a deeper level, I still, I mean, I'm a human scientist, so I still like the, the real thing. Uh, I remember when, when I was younger, maybe because I was younger, maybe because I was in Italy, there was much more touch involved in my life with, with my friends. I was feeling connected. And now, I don't know, I think I started to lose a bit this, this aspect. And if I have to think about uh, really a future when there is this metaverse where we are connected, but at distance, 
I would like mm -hmm. that maybe hapticians might break this uh, this limit between the digital and the physical world so that we can find again this sense of uh, belonging or connection between people because I like technology but at the same time I fear it a bit I feel like we are losing a bit uh, the real world uh, then there is all of this discussion what is real what is not because if you are touching me through a technology okay there is a medium but still it should be real right but um, yeah so I don't know. Uh, it's amazing. You have like very, very similar views on that. Um, yeah. I mean, I have the similar views with yours because yeah, it's about like connecting people, right? Like I feel yeah. like touch has this power, which mm. is like unpacked yet, like the mediated touch. I mean, the real yes. touch has this power, but not the mediated touch yet. This yeah. affective side, right? Being able yeah. to yeah. communicate emotions in a very quick, intuitive way, right? We don't need to think mm -hmm. even... Like we understand exactly what happens when someone touches us, right? Like exactly. the intention, the meaning behind it, but and also it affects our emotional state. Mm -hmm. But I, yeah. but but I guess we are still far in terms of mediated touch to achieve that. What do you think? Yeah, I think we are still uh, still far in a way. In the world of technology, there is lots of hype just for you know these mm. advancements without really thinking about a real issue. I think that uh, in our company, we try to have this in mind to, to have a, a real application when we do stuff, because otherwise uh, we just go around poking at the possibility of doing something that it's, it feels great, but maybe there is not a real um, uh, solution of, of a real problem behind. So, so I think, yes, we are a bit far from that because mainly we unlock new potential, new technologies, and we just use it because we can without stopping a bit uh, thinking what's what's really important. No? Uh, something that it's, might be happening already in other fields, like now there is this AI every day, there is something coming up. No? Uh, of course, sometimes uh, there are really useful technologies, some other times they are you know, suspicious <laughs> because yes, yeah. you can do it, do it but then... Is this really needed? I don't know. So I think it would be helpful if every one of us would just stop and thinking about real issues and find a solution to that. And affective touch might be something like that. No, as I said before, you you might think about um, people at distance and uh, you need connection during the war or uh, because you are in a hospital or for whatever reason, or maybe there is an hygienic situations and then you need to find a solution. So um, yeah. I would like to go in that direction to keep that in mind instead of doing something that is wow effect, but then it just you know consume itself for what it is. It's a wow, but then right, that's right. Well, this is great. I think we should stop here on this note, which yeah. I would like to highlight as solve real issues. Yes. I think this should be the slogan for all the technologies. Yes. Actually. <laughs> Completely so agree. thank you for this uh, insights thank uh, and thank you for for your experience for sharing your experience and your opinions really thank appreciate you so much it. For, for the interview thank okay. you thank you bye bye, -bye.